Very good evening to you and a warm welcome to The Globe, coming to you live from Johannesburg. I'm Sindhi and Gorn. Thanks indeed for joining us. Now, this story leads a pregnant woman and 14 children are among 32 killed in an attack on Friday in the Cameroon Civil War read an English-speaking region. This, according to the United Nations Bureau sub-office for the coordination of humanitarian affairs in the country, several victims were allegedly burned to death. An unknown number of residents were injured and around 600 have fled from the village. Well, the region is beset by a decades-old conflict. The Ambazonian governing council in the English-speaking regions of the country say they want Cameroon to leave their territory Ambazonia. They argue Cameroon annexed the region at the end of World War II. Almost 8,000 people from here have fled to Nigeria's eastern and southern states of Taraba and across rivers over the past fortnight. They want an independent mediator and have called on the United Nations to get involved. The insurgency has forced half a million people to flee their homes. Well, this has certainly presented President Paul Bia with his biggest challenge since he took power nearly 40 years ago. Uh, Dr. Cho Ayaba is the president of the Ambazonia Governing Council. He joins us now via Skype. Dr. Cho, a very good evening to you. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, first of all, take us through what really happened here. Thank you for, for having me. Uh, it was a very sad event, but you be reminded that just... Uh, from January up till now, there have been four massacres leading to the death of about 150 uh, persons. But Ngabu was particularly gruesome because of the death of close to 15 children and a pregnant uh, lady, including the passing away of the fetus. Uh, what we know, based on the investigation of uh, Department of Human Rights and Humanitarian Affairs is that more than 50 armed soldiers of Cameroon, including militias that it had armed, moved into the village of Ngabo and indiscriminately attacked the civilian population. We also understand that some civilians moved out of their homes in an attempt to escape the onslaught. Uh, they were killed and then their bodies moved back into the houses and the homes were set ablaze. Evidence uh, from blood that was spilled along their pathway uh, shows that they were dragged on the ground and moved back into their homes and, and, and burnt. So it's particularly gruesome and very painful uh, for the Amazonian people because it has become a repeated occurrence that Cameroon soldiers can simply move into villages, murder civilians, and, and walk away with such crimes. What do you know so far in terms of the death toll? We know 35 persons have died. I know uh, the United Nations Humanitarian Affairs has posted 34, but what we are aware, there are 35 persons uh, who are confirmed death, including 14 children. Well, we do understand that uh, there was a separatist uh, insurgency that erupted in the minority English-speaking region against the French-speaking government. Is that what uh, the whole conflict is all about? We are not a minority. We are, as I said in my last interview, we are the first democracy in the continent of Africa. We have been a state that was occupied by Cameroon since 1961. And what we are struggling to do is to decolonize uh, our country from a black-on-black -black colonialism that was sanctioned by the United Nations and the United Kingdom. So we are a separate state from Cameroon fighting against terror and brutal occupation, violating international law. Yeah, but uh, is the issue really against the Francophone and the Anglophone regions, though? No. It is, uh, I know it's very simplistic to situate it as a linguistic issue because of uh, the two colonial powers that, you know, had mandates and trusteeship duties over Cameroon and Ambazonia. It's a nationalist issue. It's a, an issue of one country that gained independence in 1960, violating, you know, the borders of Ambazonia 
and installing itself within our own country using excessive force. So it's colonialism. It's not an issue between the people of Amazonia and the people of Cameroon. It's neither an issue between Francophones and Anglophones. It's an issue between Cameroon as a state and Amazonia as a state. Well, details are a bit sketchy at this point, but uh, what we do know at this point is that uh, 40 armed men and members of the security and defense, uh, and defense forces came and attacked the village. What's the government saying about this? And uh, is there any group that has uh, so far taken responsibility? Cameroon is responsible for the killings of these 35 persons. There is no iota of doubt about it. I think the defense uh, minister has also accepted that responsibility. But in a partial way, the culpability is on Cameroon as the occupying power. We have enough evidence to show that Cameroon forces were responsible. Interviews have been conducted with eyewitnesses who exactly uh, observe what happened. And this is not the first time. Uh, there have been four massacres in, in, in the year 2020, alone resulting to the death of 150 persons. So, uh, for the United Nations asking Cameroon as the culpable party to investigate itself is is laughable. And what we what we seek is the International Criminal Court to hold Cameroon responsible for the genocide that it has been committing within Amazonia in the past uh, three years. What then gives you the confidence that the government is really behind this? Do you have any facts? We have facts. I'm speaking based on facts that have been reported by my Department of Human Rights and Humanitarian Affairs. I witnessed a report. We have uh, gotten persons who have reported from the ground. And uh, Cameroon's minister has also uh, sent out a statement accepting partial responsibility. I think the United Nations uh, report is also pointing uh, responsibility on Cameroon. So the facts are not disputed in terms of the numbers killed, in terms of the culpable party. Let's talk about the leader of uh, Cameroon's separatist uh, movement, Sisiku Ayuk Tabe, and none of his followers have been given uh, life sentences by a Cameroonian court. Uh, does, that, does their arrest uh, have to do uh, with the brewing crisis in Cameroon? Yes, uh, Sisiku Ayuk Tabe is a leader of the IG, um, and he and his uh, comrades were kidnapped uh, from Abuja and uh, deported under brutal circumstances to Yaoundé and detained incommunicado for more than a year and then heroically passed through a kangaroo trial and given life sentences. Uh, these are people who have stood up to challenge Cameroon's brutality over Amazonia, Cameroon's uh, policies of annexation. And these are people who have fought uh, within their own institutions as lecturers in Nigeria, and uh, persons that are leading organizations against the practices of Cameroon in their homeland. And they have been detained in Yaoundé for, for more than two years now. All right, Mr. Cho, thank you so much for your time. Much appreciated. That was uh, Dr. Cho Ayaba. He's the president of the Ambazonia Governing Council. He joined us via Skype.